What's up guys, it's Dom Matter here, and today we are going to be reacting to Lymphamy's History of Japan series, part 29. So this one is how Japanese royals kept their pure blood. Obviously this is something you see in a lot of royal families, probably the most famous inbred royal family of all time being the Habsburgs. Um, this kind of concept of like purity, pure blood, noble blood, all of these different things, uh, they tend, you know, there tends to be some of this in a lot of medieval societies. Uh, thankfully, we've gotten away from that, so now people don't inbreed nearly as much. Um, and, yeah, so I'm honestly not too sure how the Japanese did this. I wasn't even well aware that the Japanese did do this, although it doesn't surprise me considering how common we see it throughout the rest of the world. Uh, you know, especially Europe uh, probably has the most famous examples of this again, the Habsburgs. Um, but anyway, link to the original video down below. And again, this is how Japanese royals kept their pure blood by lymphomy. Let's jump into it. This question for you. Okay, in early up. Japan, when an emperor died, who was next in line to the throne? If you guessed the emperor's eldest son, good guess, but it's wrong. Yeah, in, in early Japan, it was like, it depends how early he's talking about, but in like the earliest parts of Japan, it was whoever he appointed as his heir. Your punishment? You have to write, I love this video, in the comments. Sorry, I didn't make the rules. Upon an emperor's death, it was not automatic that the throne passed to his eldest son. Japan did not have any official rules of succession until the modern age. The emperor was free to name a crown prince, yeah. an heir, who ascended after the emperor died. And he could pick among any member of the imperial family, his son, grandson, brother, whoever. Having no well-defined rules caused all kinds of shenanigans when an emperor died. If they had an official rule that the emperor's eldest son succeeded him, then it would have been clear. Of course you would- Um, yes and no, because again, we see this in Europe, right? Europe has a lot of formal rules stab established, um, basically after, I would say, like the 8 or 900s, right? Even before that, you had formal rules with, like, Germanic tribal law. Uh, the problem there was that it divided the kingdom, right? Probably most famously the, the uh, Carolingian dynasty getting split among the three brothers, uh, leading to France, Germany, and Lotharingia, uh, which, you know, Lotharingia ends up getting eaten, as it's obviously not a nation anymore. Um, but then, you know, once uh, male prefer male, so sometimes male exclusive primogeniture, sometimes male preference primogeniture, um, once the primogeniture gets established, though, you basically have these established rules. But the problem was there was so much infidelity among the royals and nobles that a lot of the time you would have, say, a bastard son being born to a maid or, you know, the bar keepers, the bar owner's daughter or just like some random shit like that, right? Uh, in the case of William the Conqueror, a bastard being born to a tanner. Um or a tanner's daughter sorry and what ends up happening is you know the oldest son is not actually from the the royal marriage but then they try to pass the throne on to the the you know the oldest legitimate son as they were often called um but then the the oldest illegitimate son or bastard child ends up trying to take the throne or people try to place him on the throne or all of these other things or you have a really young heir and then like the brother or an uncle or something tries to take over um so it, it's not always perfect japan actually had a better job than most nations uh in, in this but that being said it still wasn't great they still had a lot of issues so would have still had the occasional murder of the eldest son by his brothers that's yeah. a given but in Japan's case, the field of candidates was wider, allowing for more power struggles. The Japanese recognized this problem, of course, but instead of creating an official line of succession and be done with it, different eras dealt with the issue in different ways. Psst, don't miss out. Click subscribe and the bell. The Nara period was ruled by what some historians have called the Tenmu dynasty, when the descendants of Emperor Tenmu sat the throne. The Tenmu dynasty had their own solutions to the succession problem, which we'll cover another time. Right now, let's talk about what the Japanese did before. Prior to Emperor Tenmu's reign, they reduced Trevor the Trump number of possible candidates for crown prince. Fewer candidates, fewer power struggles. How did they do this? By keeping the bloodline pure. Yes, it involved incest. <laughs> it was simple. Just knock up your half-sister. Don't quote that out of context in the comments, you bastards. I know what you guys write. I see you. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know the difference between step-siblings and half-siblings, it's easy. Step-siblings? Not related. 
Half siblings related. Step siblings share no yeah. biological parents. Half siblings share one biological parent. And I hope there's never. And you, and you would see this a lot um, in Europe too. Sometimes even with full siblings, right? And I get, uh, you know, Europe's probably the most famous. Ancient Egypt, another famous one, right? Ancient Egypt. Uh, King Tutankhamun is probably the most famous example in Egypt. I believe his parents were siblings. Um, their parents, I believe, were half siblings. Uh, and then one of their parents were cousins, uh, or sort of one of their, I think it was their father, his parents were cousins. So they were like three or four generations of inbred, like ridiculous amounts of inbred. Um, and yeah, again, you see, you see this all over in ancient history. Never a time in your life when this little piece of knowledge becomes significant. For further clarification on step siblings and half siblings, see the internet. <laughs> the system they had before Tenmu was something called double royalty, and it worked like this. I hope you're watching the screen and sober. If not, just give up now. So let's say you have Emperor Bob Bunaga. One of Bob the perks Naga. of being emperor was that they had a bunch of consorts or concubines, exactly like being a YouTuber. But they usually had one main consort. She was the most important because her son became the crown prince. The next emperor. We'll call him John Mu. Now Emperor John Mu also needed a main consort. Question is, how did he choose who got the position? Well this was how influential clans got their feet in the door of the imperial house. Through schemings and dealings and the occasional murder, a strong clan leader would offer his daughter as consort to Emperor Babunaga. Yeah I know, the women's rights movement was still <laughs> in its infancy at this point. The daughter of this union Funnily enough, you wouldn't even need the women's rights movement to have this kind of stuff happen. Um, I mean, you can see this in modern dating, right? You have the, uh, this kind of like an aside, but like you have kind of the normalization of promiscuity and the normalization of, you know, out of wedlock sex. And I think it's something like the top 20% of men sleep with roughly 80% of the women. Uh, and then the remaining 80%, uh, not even really, just, I guess it's, you could say the next 40% of men. 40 to 50 percent of men sleep at the bottom 20 percent of women and then the bottom 20 percent of men or bottom 20 to 30 percent of men are virgins or have not had sex in the last year so uh you know high status high ranking males getting lots of women uh not t it's not uh, out of the ordinary um it it'll happen regardless of societal uh structure right it, it, especially regardless of societal structure right you take away environmental and all that's left is uh biological right and then the biological urges push people towards that so you see kind of uh the same thing happening in modern society despite the fact that there's obviously more women's rights liberation all that kind of stuff today than there has been at any point in history emperor john mu's half sister as you can see became john mu's main consort their son became the next emperor emperor max uh, mune Max this is called double royalty because Emperor Maximune had royal blood from both parents. Remember that this system was not law or anything, so there were deviations, but it became the norm. It protected the imperial family from outside influence because the consort from an outsider clan could not give birth to a future emperor. At the most, she could only give birth to the next emperor's main consort. When the Soga clan dominated the Japanese court in the Asuka period, they did it within this system. Their daughters were consorts to many emperors. These unions could not result in future emperors, but they persisted. They just kept marrying into the imperial family, keeping their influence fresh. Women were invaluable to the top clans. Being consorts to the emperor meant they pierced his inner circle. They became the eyes and ears and mouths for their clans. Now, were there problems with this system? Sure. Like when the main consort did not produce a son, or the emperor died before producing a son. That yep. meant the field of candidates opened up, and people getting whacked. Again, another common example, you see this in Europe too, right? Uh, Henry VIII, probably the most famous example. What is it like, um, you know, beheaded, divorced, died, beheaded, divorced, died, or something like that? Uh, I can't remember the exact way it goes, but yeah. Yeah, you know, it doesn't matter... You know, humans act the same regardless of the system. And the systems are human-developed, right? So there's a reason these systems developed. When Tenmu became emperor, this model was chucked out the window. 
Tenmu seized the throne through the Jinshin War, a civil war between Tenmu and Prince Otomo. Tenmu was the brother of the previous emperor, Emperor Tenji, so he obviously didn't fit the double royal son model. Although Prince Otomo didn't fit the model either. He was Tenji's son, but his mother was not Tenji's main consort. In any case, after Tenmu took power, the Fujiwara clan decided they didn't like the system. They were an up-and-coming clan, but they wanted to be an already-arrived clan, and some nonsense tradition to protect the imperial house and prevent wars and disorder wasn't gonna stop them. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Shout out to two new patrons this week, Sam Fieldman, hello Mr. Fieldman, and Genova83, we got ourselves a Final Fantasy fan here, and then- Alright, so, so yeah, I'm guessing that the next video is gonna be about the Fujiwara clan. Um... We got uh, Empress Jito, badass third female emperor of Japan who played 3D chess. Okay, so possibly. Um, be interesting to see. But yeah, the one thing I find, like, you know, a lot of the time you hear people talk about how, you know, societal structures arrange it so that, like, this thing happens or that thing happens. But, you know, you can really just look at the evidence and it basically says the opposite, right? And I, f I find that people do this a lot in history. They, they let their ideology cloud reality. Right. So you can like, for example, you can look at like modern societies which have uh, very little legal, uh, you know, you know le most modern Western societies have very little legal requirements on like how sexual activity should be engaged when it comes to like how men and women a interact with each other outside of like I think incest is banned in most places, um, obviously age consent laws, age consent stuff. Um, but outside of those two, there's really not much in the way of legality on how men and women interact with each other. Um, and what you see in modern societies is that, you know, men and women arrange themselves in largely the same way that they would have arranged themselves in historical societies, right? Where, you know, a lot of the top men are, you know, the top ranking men in the social structure, whatever that social structure may be, are sleeping with the majority of women, you know, the top 10 20 percent of men have the majority of women the next 10 to 20 percent of men have most of the rest of women and then everyone else has little to nothing um and i think a big reason for that is you know people will create these societal structures you know this people always you know they say societal structures create us it's kind of like a view of the world but you know we create them as well we create them for largely to benefit our natural uh inclinations i guess is the best way to put it but anyway let me know what you think below like comment subscribe i'll see you guys in the next one